Hello and welcome back. So in this episode we're going to use the Amplify Shader Editor to create a water material. So first I'm going to right click and create a material called Water 1. As well as a shader, Amplify Surface Shader, and I'll name that Water 1 as well. And then in my shader settings I'm going to call it Evan Daily slash Water 1. Compile, and then in your shader settings, make sure you have the material selected, and then in your inspector, go to the shader. Should be black by default. If it's still white, you probably haven't changed your shader yet. Um, so the first thing I want to do for the depth effect is click on the material and go into blend mode, transparent, and transparent. I also want to disable cast and receive shadows, and compile. And then I'm going to kind of zoom out and go like about this far away. I want to create a screen depth node. Or sorry, uh, first I want the screen position node. I'm going to take the XYZ and connect that to a screen depth node. I'm going to take the W and connect that to a subtract node. Like that. And then I'm going to connect them to an absolute value node. And if I compile this, um, that's not doing what we want. We need to make sure we click on the screen position and set this to an output of screen. All right, so that's better. So what this is doing uh, is you can see that um, down here where the surface of the water is the furthest from the ground, we have a value of 1. It's, it's almost completely white. And then up here where the surface of the water is really close to the ground, it's giving us a value closer to zero. And so that's something we can play with. Um, and uh, if you want to know what the nodes are, basically the screen position is the surface of the water, and the screen depth is the ground behind the water. And so you take those two positions and you subtract them, and that gives you the distance between them. So what do we want to do with this? Um, we could use it for like creating foam in these areas. We could use it for um, creating different colors. I think the, the most logical thing probably is to just um, create like a, co a color for the deep areas and then a color for the um, shallower areas. So for the color node, that's going to be 5. Left click. We'll make this a property so it's visible in the inspector. And I'll call it deep color. And uh, let's just choose kind of like a dark teal, maybe something like that. And uh, I can duplicate that with Control D, and we'll call this shallow color. Make that like more of a green. And now we need a lerp node, so that's going to be uh, L and then left click. And when it's close to 1, that's going to use the second option. When it's close to 0, that's going to use the first option. Um, so that's what this lerp node does. And so now we can compile this. And you can see the deeper colors are darker. I don't like how it created this harsh edge here, but we can fix that later. Um, so I think it's looking pretty good so far. I'm just going to grab all of this and pull it back. So what do we want to do now? I think a good next step would be to make this kind of wavy on the surface. So if we look at the, um, the, the water that comes with it, this is what they're doing to make it wavy. And it took me a long time to figure out what, what, what exactly they're doing. They have a texture node here, and then they have an instance node here. And essentially, this just refers to this texture. So that, that's nice because in the inspector we only have to pick one texture and then it, it can be used twice. Uh, and then we have these two panners, and essentially the panners take in the UV coordinates of the model and then slide a texture across those UV coordinates. Um, I, I mean, that, that's, that's not a completely accurate description, but, but essentially th these are useful for sliding a texture across, across a model. Um, so there's a, a panner here, 
it's moving at this speed, a pan over here moving at a different speed in a different direction. Um, and then this essentially just uh, multiplies these to give a stronger, like a, like a taller wave basically. And all of this is going into the normal normal slot, and so this isn't actually affecting the model. It's not actually creating ripples on the model. It's just affecting the way the light refracts off the off the model, and so it looks wavy even though it hasn't actually changed our geometry. Um, so it's it's fairly efficient in how it does it. Um, so why don't we just try to replicate that? So first we need a texture coordinate, and then we need to attach two panner nodes. So I'm just going to type pan one and control D to duplicate that. I want this to go into the UV of both. And then I'm also going to hit T left click and T left click to create two texture nodes. And we don't want we don't want to have to pick the texture twice in the inspector, so just set one of them to a reference. And that's going to refer to texture sample zero, which we should actually rename to water normal. Alright, so then we connect the out to the UV on both of them. And uh, in the example, there is a scale on, on this. Weirdly enough, we can't see a scale here until we actually choose a texture. So we're going to choose wave, j just type wave and choose the small waves that comes with the shader editor. And now the scale option appears. So now we can create a float node, so that's one, left click. And let's just set this to like 0.3. Apply. And then the water example also has a blend normals node here. And if you search that and then highlight it, it just says blend normals. So honestly, I have no idea what that really does behind the scenes, um, but we're just going to um, replicate the example. All right, so now if we bring this into our albedo and apply, uh, it's not doing anything. Oh, actually, why don't we drop that onto normals? Apply. And it's still not doing anything, which is kind of strange because it should actually be working now. All right, so that took me a stupidly long time to figure out. The reason it wasn't working is because my material wasn't loaded here. Um, so when you when you only have a shader loaded, let, let me close this. Um, I'm, I'm going to load the shader and dock it right here. Uh, essentially right now I'm working on the shader defaults so that I'm working on the shader I'm not working on material any textures that I load here will be attached to the shader and like the shaders import settings uh, but if you've already put the shader on a material you won't be editing the materials textures because you, you're, you're working with the uh, the defaults it, it's just like when you write a script uh, once you change it in the inspector Editing it in the script no longer affects what shows up in, in the inspector. Um, so similarly, similarly, it's almost like we're editing the code here, but the inspector has its own value. So if you want to edit both the shader and the material at once, you need to select them both. So I have the shader loaded, so I'm just going to double click on the material. Now you can see the materials here, and there are no uh, textures with the material. So we need to load the texture, and uh, it's wave, small waves. All right, so now, right off the bat, it's working. And uh, I think I might have done this while the camera was paused, but click on this one, and you, ne you need to make sure normal map is selected for both of them. All right, so I don't like the size of the waves, so I'm just going to click on float, connect that to scale, and compile again. And that's looking a little bit better. Now I'm just going to pull all this back, and I think I will actually change that to be like 0.2. Alright, so what's next? Um, right now we only create colors based on uh, these two right here. We're not pulling any color from the ground. So that seems like the, the next logical step. So we're going to, we're going to right click and create a screen position node. And actually uh before I do that I'm just going to right click and create a grab screen color. And we're just going to connect connect that to the albedo. 
All right, so you can see what that's doing. It's essentially at every single point on the water, we're just grabbing exactly what the texture is behind it. All right, now we're just going to copy this node setup. I'm not exactly sure what it's doing. There's a screen position node, and it's taking the x and y values and appending those, and then dividing them by the distance from the camera. And honestly, I, I don't understand the logic behind that. Uh, I mean, if I, if I drew it on paper, maybe this would make sense. I, I'm not really sure what the appending is doing. Is it adding them? Is it just is it literally just appending the numbers together? I don't know. Um, but I, I, but it, it, I like the way that it distorts the surface of the water, so we're just going to copy that. So we have our grab screen, and we have the screen position. So let's collapse, collapse that, and uh, I'm just going to right-click and create an append node. And double-click that, and set the size to 2. And we're going to take the X and Y. We're also going to divide it, so we can just take this and create a divide. We're going to create a float node called distortion. And we're going to take the normals and put that into a multiply. and send those into the UV coordinate here, and compile. Oh, and we also have to connect the depth coordinate here, so W to B, and uh, compile that one more time. And everything still looks the same. We need to change the distortion here. And now, now it's starting to look really nice. So let's just set that to like a 0.1 for now. And we can uh, we can take the results of both of these and loop them together. So right now we're not even using the colors that we created at the beginning. So let's create a loop node. So that'll be L and left click. And we're going to want to mix these together a certain amount. So why don't we just take this and put it into A. Take this and put it into B. Whoops. Whatever. A. B, and for the alpha, let's just do 0.5. Oh, and I guess we should probably connect that to the albedo. All right, so now we have some deeper parts that are darker blue. We have some shallower parts that are brighter. And we have some distortion on the surface of the water. And I think I want to actually bring up the... Uh, this a little bit. So let's do 0.5. Alright, so we're definitely getting more complicated. Uh, it's it's looking better. It's not great. Um, oh, I just realized this is paused. That's why we're not seeing it ripple. Um, so it's, it's coming along. I think that instead of doing like a 50-50 split between the distortion and the depth, uh, we should probably use the depth more in the deeper areas. So let's drag these back a little bit. And I think we also want more control over how fast it fades into the darker parts. So let's first create a... Actually, so the first thing I'm going to do is just simply drop off the um, the distortion. So let's set this to 1. And now we're only seeing the initial depth effect. And uh, I want to add a float node here. So I'm going to hit 1 and left click. And this will be water depth. And we're going to simply add these together. So we're taking the, the depth that we had before, and we're going to add a value to it. And let's just call this water depth. 
Uh, the next thing I want to do is add a power node. Typically with like fog or water, you want a exponential fall off rather than a linear fall off. So I'm going to add that here and we're just going to create a new float node and I'll call it water fall off. Make it a property, connect that there, and connect that there. Compile. And I'm just going to take the numbers that worked before. Um, so with, with my previous, or I mean with, with the demo water, uh, it looks like I was using 0.9 and minus 3.6. And I just got that through trial and error. Compile. And uh, it looks a little weird at the top. And for some reason the saturate node fixes that. I don't really know what the saturate node does. And it doesn't seem like there's really any documentation on it yet. Um, but for now, you just kind of have to just trust that it works. Alright, so that, that kind of made the tops look a little bit better. I don't know why. Uh, so what's next? Oh yeah, the, the point of uh, adding the water depth and water fall off was so that we could use this for the loop here. And so that's also going to determine how much... Uh, like right now, we're only using the blue and like teal uh, colors. We're not using the the ground color below. Um, and so we're going to also use this saturate to determine how much of the ground color we use. So apply that. And uh, it looks like it's flipped. I think we want more ground color up here. So why did that happen? And that, that's actually a really easy fix. Um, we just have to flip these. Compile again. And now you can see a lot more of the ground toward the top and a lot less of it uh, down in the deeper areas. So you'll notice that it looks kind of funny on the edges. Uh, and that's just because we're seeing it through the side. Like the, the water is essentially really shallow right here because we're hitting the side and then we're only going a few feet through the, through the water before we hit the ground. If we scale this out um, on the X and Z plane, now it kind of makes more sense. The last thing I kind of want to touch on is ambient occlusion. Uh, I think by default it has a value of 1 here, and we can check that by hitting uh, 1 and then left click and connecting this to ambient occlusion. If we set this to 1, uh, once it compiled this, it shouldn't really change. Yeah, so I compiled, and the lighting is still passing through the water exactly the same way. Um, now, I think in the default demo water, this is set to 0. Compile. And I think that looks like too dark and too murky. I like the tropical look a lot better. Um, so we could set that back up to 1. But now with a value of 1, it, it almost looks too artificial. It's kind of like cartoony looking because the light isn't really uh, like getting absorbed by the water like it should be. So maybe somewhere like 0. 0.6 would be good. Uh, but depending depending on the mood you want to set for your project, you could set that to whatever you want. Alright, so I'm fairly happy with the way this turned out. I hope this was helpful to you guys. Um, I, I basically just copied the water example that, that Amplify gave us. Um, I left out the part about the foam texture. So if you want like a foaminess in the really shallow areas, uh, go into water, water sample, and then you basically just have to copy this node group down at the bottom. Uh, but yeah, I hope this was useful, and I'll see you guys next time.